Good morning. Happy Sunday. I'm Reverend Kathy McCall, minister at Unity North uh, in Spiritual Center in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. And I'm glad you've joined us today for our Sunday lesson on May 26, 2020. This is Memorial Day weekend. And if you're new, you can go to our website, find out more about us, unitynorthmn.org. There are copies of other Sunday lessons. Those can also be found on Friends of Unity North Spiritual Center a Facebook page, as well as YouTube. So um, send your friends, tell them about us. And uh, also, if you would care to leave a donation, um, you can go to that homepage, unitynorthmn.org, once again, and... Um, you can indicate whether you leave um, a donation for uh, a regular donation or for classes. And we do have one class that's ending. There's only um, one more sun or Saturday. And that's been our seven dynamic laws of healing and prosperity. And I will be coming up with another virtual class, most likely in July. But I will keep you posted on that. And there are some others coming up as well, just... Um, look online or, or look at our upcoming events for those of you who receive them. So today's lesson is called Willing Sacrifice for our Memorial Day weekend. And I want to begin by reading our daily word first. So just take a moment, sit back, relax, just get comfortable. And I'm going to read Monday's daily word because it is for Memorial Day. And the word is honor. I honor all who gave their lives in service to others. Memorial Day in the United States is a time to honor the men and women in the military who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their country. I honor the brave men and women around the earth whose service has made the world a better place I hold them in my heart with gratitude for my freedom and my safety. I am mindful of my liberty as I remember them with respect. Their sacrifice has not been in vain. Today and every day, I honor those who have given their lives in service. I pause to reflect on the bravery and faith it takes to serve. I send gratitude to everyone for their sacrifice through actions that show my love and appreciation to those who have fallen. I will never forget those I honor today. And we just also hold in mind for a moment all those loved ones that have passed. And from Romans 12:10. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. So we honor all those who gave their lives in service to others this day. And so it is. Amen. Well, this being Memorial Day weekend, Memorial Day is supposed to be a day when we remember what brave men and women have done to protect our nation in times of war. We can honor the lives of those brave individuals who put themselves in harm's way for a cause. Reflecting on their sacrifice with gratitude and deep compassion, even while envisioning the peace that we would co-create, is helping to give their lives and deaths greater meaning. Memorial Day officially dates back to 1868 when Southern women's groups who had taken to decorating the grave of Confederate soldiers would often walk to the other side of the graveyard to honor the lives of the Union soldiers as well. One of the themes of this holiday is that of sacrifice, and it has some different meanings often by letting go of the old, outdated ideas, false beliefs, and the way we used to do things, we choose a more abundant life. We sacrifice or give up an old way of being for the greater good. 
one day now, um, or one day about, probably about 29 years ago now, long time, I was on my way to do a talk in ministerial school on death and dying. My son, Justin, who was with me at the time, was six years old then, and I was talking to him before, um, I was taking him, rather, to um, uh, before school daycare. And he was seated, he was seat belted in, <laughs> but he was leaned over sound asleep. And it was still slightly dark outside and we were on a two lane highway when suddenly a large deer jumped in front of our car. I remember slamming on the brakes looking into his eyes and knowing there was absolutely nothing I could do but surrender to the moment. I braced myself and the impact knocked us off the road fortunately, which saved us from oncoming traffic. We were not hurt, just dazed, though the trunk of the car was completely destroyed, excuse me, the hood of the car rather, and Justin woke up suddenly and he asked what happened. And at that point, the deer, which had fallen, got up, fell, got up, fell, about four times as it made its way almost to my car window, to my side window. It looked me in the eye, fell, and died. Well, you can imagine how traumatizing that was for me. We made our way to a house across the street and we waited for the sheriff who told us it was the largest deer he had ever seen. It was a 10 point buck and it was a miracle it had not gone through the windshield. Several days later, due to a progressive dinner in our church, a couple we had not met before showed up at our house and the woman there turned out to be, who had come, she turned out to be a shaman. Some might call her a shamanic facilitator, but it's like a medicine man or woman of a native tribe. And she led me on a shamanic meditative dream journey to find out why I killed the deer. In the experience, the deer said to me, I sacrificed myself so you might have life. I died for your sins. Whoa, that was a little much. And I pondered those words, but several days later, I met a Native American man from the deer tribe. Things are really getting spooky now, very synchronistic, which is a seeming coincidence that is not really one at all. And I told him of my experience and he said he and his tribe believe that when an animal sacrifices itself in such a way, it gives you its power. And the power of the deer is gentle strength. This was just a few months before I was to leave school and to start my first ministry. So I reflected on what the deer said in my meditation. I sacrificed myself so you could have life. I died for your sins. Well, in unity, we teach that sin is missing the mark of our divine potential. It comes from negative or false thinking. I had through the years had a series of car wrecks and I had been saying that that's how I was going to go. The experience though woke me up to my negative thinking about that and about other things. And this is really a story about sacrifice. I had to give up a belief for my greater good, not just about car wrecks, but about changing my negative thoughts to positive. You know, when we recognize that many of the circumstances of our lives are directly or indirectly created by the beliefs and thoughts that we hold, we can give up these sometimes cherished beliefs and set ourselves free. We can sacrifice an old story, an old way of being, transforming our life into something greater, something higher. 
By letting go of the old, we choose a more abundant life. Humanity is capable of destructive or creative choices, and some would call the destructive choices sin, especially when they hurt others as well as ourselves. Though unity would not emphasize it that way, we would ask, will we choose the false belief or the creative path of life? By letting go of the false or negative, we choose a more abundant life. Speaking of sins, a Sunday school teacher asked a little girl, what are the sins of omission? She thought a moment and then she said, well, they're the sins we ought to have committed but haven't yet. Well, I never did get to, to do my talk on death and dying in ministerial school because I was late for class that day. Instead, I was assigned a paper and I wrote it on the power of sacrifice. Sacrifice is an important element of this spiritual path. The original meaning of the word sacrifice means to make sacred. There are three aspects that are relevant for us. There is first the unselfish act of giving up what seems to be our good on behalf of another. This can be associated with the caregiver in us, we give up our time to take care of another. We give up our food to feed another. We focus more on the other than on ourselves. And a second form of sacrifice is the act of giving up whatever prevents our good, such as negative beliefs or habits. This involves the power of release. When a destructive habit is hanging on, Sometimes it takes the power of grace to take it from us. We sacrifice it to the divine within. And third, willing sacrifice is for the good of all. We think of Jesus or Buddha or a great person who has an impact on the whole. This also applies to soldiers who risk their lives to protect a country. Well, in all cases of sacrifice, we help ourselves as well as others. It is the ultimate expression of both surrender and compassion. Sacrifice is not really a word we hear too often in unity. And why is that? Well, because in traditional church, it's often used to describe the appeasement of an angry God. Ancient ones used to sacrifice animals on the altar. That's the term sacrificial lamb. In some cultures, people were sacrificed, often the beautiful young maiden or the in innocent child. This was done to ensure mercy from a vengeful God. But the God we teach about in unity is a God of love and compassion. Sometimes sacrifice is giving up what appears to be our, our own good for the sake of another, as in caregiving. All of us have that experience at times with loved ones. We put our loved ones first. Of course, in the extreme, when we give up our own good for others, it can be codependency or overcare. One definition of codependency is that when we face death, another person's life passes before our eyes. <laughs> well, Rose Long said, just after my retirement from 45 years of teaching, I decided to do some subbing for a local school. And during one of my classes, I asked the children if they would be willing to die for a friend. For example, I asked, would any of you be willing to die for me? And a young voice piped up, well, that wouldn't be fair. You're going to die in a few years anyway. But there's a sacrifice where we put our loved ones first because we're called to do so in certain cases. And other times, sacrifice is giving up that which prevents our good, such as a negative belief or a habit. We let go and we let God do it for us. An example of this type of sacrifice can be giving up sugar or caffeine or nicotine giving up a belief in lack, overcoming addiction of any kind. 
giving up an unhealthy habit, giving up gossip or our beliefs about another person. Generally, we turn it over to God. One of my very favorite affirmations is simply, God is in charge. God is in charge. It's a letting go. If we're holding on to beliefs in ill health, we sacrifice them for divine life to course more freely through our bodies. If we believe we are unsuccessful in relationships or in business, it's time to give, to give up those ideas. And are we going to hang on to resentments or surrender them? By letting go of the old, we choose a more abundant life. We create our lives and our deaths by the thoughts we hold and the sacrifices that we make out of love. Now, this Memorial Day weekend, we think about our soldiers. And there have been many who have made the ultimate sacrifice for a greater cause. The original pioneer on near-death experiences, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, told a story about some veterans that comes to mind on this Memorial Day weekend. In one of her large workshop groups, which included a number of Vietnam veterans, she asked the vets to go out and wait in another room so she could speak privately to the remaining group. And the vets agreed and they left. And she then told everyone else that a number of these men and women were not only dealing with grief and loss and the devastating effects of war, but they were also holding on to extreme feelings of not being appreciated or welcomed when they came back to America. Elizabeth declared, we must begin to heal these deep-seated wounds because they're still affecting the vets to this day. So it was time to redo the experience of coming home from Vietnam in a completely new, loving, healing, and supportive way. She asked the workshop attendees to represent a changed America, to shout out cheers when the vets came back into the room, as if they were coming home for the first time, to celebrate the vets in a loving, powerful way to whisper tender, healing words, to fill them with encouragement, pride, and blessings. In other words, to welcome them home with gifts of love that would touch them to the very core of their being. So the group agreed to do this. And Elizabeth invited the vets back into the room. And as they arrived, the audience cheered and clapped, offering words of appreciation and blessings and lots of healing touch. Someone ran to the piano and began to play parade music. The energy was unbounded. Love, encouragement, and healing filled the room. And the vets were so overcome with emotion that years and years of tears began to pour down their faces. They were overwhelmed with such powerful feelings that many of them fell to their knees weeping. It was difficult for some to accept and contain this blessing, yet they were profoundly grateful to receive it. And then Elizabeth directed everyone to create a circle around the veterans. And she asked the vets to walk over to each person in the circle to receive a personal individual welcome. She said, You've come home, and we welcome you. There was not a dry eye in the group, as you can imagine. The vets were not the only ones who received healing that day. Everyone in the entire group was moved by the soul-stirring experience. To finally receive appreciation and celebration and welcome after a thankless sacrifice. Well, serving God requires sacrifice, but it's this sacrifice to God that will ultimately bring us happiness. And that is our true symbol of the sacrificial lamb. Our life is given to God. 
One Sunday morning, the pastor noticed little Alex standing in the foyer of the church staring up at a large plaque. It was covered with names with small American flags mounted on either side of it. The seven-year-old had been staring at the plaque for some time, so the minister walked up, stood beside the little boy and said quietly, Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Reverend, he replied, still focused on the plaque. Reverend, what is this? He asked. The minister said, well, son, it's a memorial to all the young men and women who died in the service. Soberly, they just stood together staring at the large plaque. Finally, little Alex's voice, very audible and trembling with fear, asked, which service, the 9.30 or the 11 a.m.? <laughs> he thought he might be a sacrifice. Remember the crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin? He worked with all those crocodiles and other deadly animals, and he died in a freak accident while sea de or deep sea diving. The media called it a terrible tragedy because we live in a death-defying or death-denying culture where death is the worst enemy. Though a huge loss for his family, I believe the Native Americans would say his was a good death, perhaps even a great death. Here was this man who could have been mauled or maimed through the years by some of the world's deadliest creatures, and instead, a fairly benign animal, a stingray, stings him directly in the heart and he dies instantly. He was a public figure who brought a whole lot of awareness to animals and their plight, and he was a warrior for conservation. That was his true mission. He said, we haven't much time left. People need to touch and feel and smell these creatures and fall in love with them to save them. And he had an amazing death, as rare as a lightning strike. And what happened? It got the world's attention. And more money was raised in even just the first few days to help the cause than had ever been hoped for. I can almost believe that Steve had a pact with a stingray in advance, or a pact with life and death. I believe Steve made a willing sacrifice for the good of all. He used the power of the spoken word to communicate his truth. He grabbed people's attention and then left in a very dramatic way. You know, whether it's large groups of people who make their exit at the same time in a famine or a terrorist collect, uh, attack or a collective disease, a pandemic, a natural disaster, or a school shooting. Though victims outwardly, I often think of them as willing sacrifices. Those whose souls have somehow chosen to help wake us up to the plight of people in Africa, or to hasten our medical research, to show us the horrors of war, to show us that there are ways to stop world hunger and to end violence and to better prepare for crisis. There are ways to eradicate AIDS, Ebola, coronavirus, and other collective ailments. There are ways to take care of our environment. There are ways to love one another. This weekend, take time first to pray for our soldiers and thank them silently and aloud if possible. Second, pray for and give thanks for other sacrificial lambs you have known. Third, take time to reflect on old beliefs or habits to be released or sacrificed, and even create statements of release and affirmation in regards to those. And fourth, ask God for help with a new beginning. By letting go of the old, we choose a more abundant life. German mystic Meister Eckert said, God is ready to give great things when we are ready to give up everything. And this is what Jesus tells us to do, 
to lose our life so that we might find it, to give up the selfish ego part of us so that we might experience the kingdom or more abundant life. When we surrender our lives to our higher power, all things are made new. And today, we give thanks to all those who have made the world a better place through their willing sacrifice. God bless you. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.